My name is Brian Broadbent and I joined the band in 1953 when Alec Mortimer was a conductor. I had been to a slow melody contest at Marsden and that was on the Saturday. On the Monday morning, who knocked at my door at Diggle was Alec Mortimer, inviting me to come to Black Dyke. I'd won the, the contest, slow melody contest at Mars, Marsden, and he said he would fix me up with a job, digs, and in about three weeks he's written a letter for, to me telling me I would be living with Geoffrey and, and his mother and father and I was going to be a wool sorter, a apprentice wool sorter. And we had to travel on a certain day, Sunday, and I started work on the Monday. Um, it was just a new life for me because I come in from a little village called Diggle and everybody knew everybody else. It was so tiny. I had never heard the man before I came over here. So I don't, I, I didn't, I didn't really know much about other bands. I were at Dob Cross Band, which was a little band, and, and uh, you might have heard of Bob Platt. Well, his, his father was my godfather, Jimmy Platt, and he conducted the band at Dob Cross. But I wasn't aware of, of other bands at all until I came over here. Then it was absolutely um, awesome, really. The, the, when you sat in the band and, and you could, this sound was twice, three times, four times as great as whatever I'd heard. And it was quite difficult for the first three or four months to settle down. There's times I thought, I think I might go home. <laughs> that um, I lived with Jeff, Jeff Whitam, and, and he was quite good. You know, somebody used to take, him, take me out and sort of, and his father was very prone to the band. So, um, he had good digs. The only, th the only thing that was difficult was doing a, a small bed. <laughs> and Jeff was 18 stone. So he used to get work up with an arm across my head. <laughs> so, but I, I didn't know much. I'd heard of Black Dyke, but I didn't really know much about it. You know, so that, that's all really I can tell you about it. I think it was very important. Um, the directors of the mill didn't interfere with the band. There was one one person which came up to the band occasionally, or the band wanted anything, they did to ask and see what it, what what was it, but. They were very good for the band because when they won a contest, they used to take all the band for a meal somewhere, probably Halifax or Bradford or somewhere like that. And there was quite, um, how, do, how do I put it really, for the band. But I don't think the band cost them much money. The uniforms, things like that, but they they produce the material for them, and, and 
there, there was quite um, supporting, but not interfering. The band run itself, and <clears throat> the conductor of the band was the one who, um, how do I put it? They, they, after every band rehearsal, there was a meeting by the band and all the engagements came through the band and the band voted do we want to do it or not and if it was 1312 the 13 had it nobody nobody had it. i've heard people say well i couldn't do that you know well says you'll have to get a debt for it you know that's it so that in that respect the band was the committee and the committee was the band. And I think that was quite a good thing to keep the night band at the top because everybody was involved, you know. So the only, the only niggles I can tell you, say about the band was um, Pub Across Road, nearly all of them went in for a drink after. But then we got a breakaway people, the people who went down the, down there towards Brig House and another pub down there. So you got to, um, our, we, we once said that it's being discussed in the pub, you know, that and then, and it, it did cause a little bit of a thing, but being local, I didn't go to any, any, either there or down there. So I, 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 I used to put my, my oar into it because I was, I was the treasurer of the band for 20, about 20 years. And we had a conductor in that time who came to the band one night and after meeting us, so he says, I booked a concert. And things went quiet, you see, he says, well, somebody said, well, well when is it? When's the, when's the concert? So he gave us the date and, and he gave us the, how much he charged them. And one of the band says, oh, I can't do it, I'm away. Three or four more says, no, I can't either. It's a way, you know. You should have put it to the band first. So somebody suggested that he, he wrote, them down, wrote, wrote them to cancel it. And he did do. Three weeks after, one of the band lads who said he couldn't do it, said, what, where, where's that, where was that job you booked? It sounded a good job. Can we vote on it? And the band voted to do it. And the conductor had to write a letter then to say, sorry, we can do all that concert. And I don't think he, he was a new conductor and I don't think he was aware that the band decided. So he never did it again. So it's quite, quite good. When it, when it is all above line. No, that, that was quite good, so. Uh, Gordon Sutcliffe. Gordon was very outspoken. Um, Jeff Whitton. Um, who else? Willie Lang at the beginning, because um, he, he wasn't there very long when he went to the orchestra. Um, Oh, Tommy Waterman. Tommy was, was one who um, said what he thought, you know. A lot of the band uh, were, was quite good at, at the saying what they, what they thought. And, and of course, the new, new people didn't. They didn't, they didn't, there might be two or three years before they spoke, you know, in, in that. But, 
the people who spoke up was always speaking for the band. I think that was the, the, the best thing. You could agree with them. And um, so it, it, I think that's what, what run the band and kept the band quite high. You know, the sort of, um, they were all part of the band. Not, not some of us were, I think they all, all were part of the band. They were all paid, um, whatever they charged for the job, there was £10 for the band, and the rest of this thing was shared out. But in them days, it was shared out to an extra paper, per, extra person, and that stopped in bank. And so some jobs were quite good, one, one, when others weren't, um, but everybody got the same money from top to bottom. Didn't matter whether whether you played a triangle or or an instrument, they, they all shared the money. And with with the the balance in the band creeping up a little bit, when VAT came in. It left us with a problem. We had no idea really for what what to do with it. And that year we were going to Switzerland for a week. And so I, I said to Roy Newsom, Roy worked band bandmaster then, I said, Well, who paid for the tickets for, for flying there? He said, Well, they do, the Swiss do all that. I said, well, could it be changed? He said, this is what you mean. I said, well, could we pay for the tickets out of the book, bank, book, money, what, to get rid of it? And I said, when we get to Switzerland, they can pay us back in Swiss francs or something like that. And Roy says, well, it sounds a good idea, that he said, because it it, it won't won't be there to, to see somebody say, "Oh, you've all this money at bank." You know, we had nothing at bank then. And when we got to Switzerland, of course, they gave us the money, and I we shared it out so many ways. So when they come back, they change it back into, and that sort got rid of the big chunk. They'd all put it in, but now they all got it back, you know, but uh, that that was quite a, how do I put it, a, a worry, put it, worry, otherwise the books were wrong, wrong, completely wrong. And the old band, old band players, when I was first doing the, the balance sheet, it blocked, um, Charlie Emmett says, well, I think you ought to put just a bit more off. Now then, I says, no, I can't do it. I said, it won't balance, you know. And, and every balance sheet I did was balanced. Um, I, sometimes at Christmas I was sat down, well, half a day doing a balance sheet and getting everything. But I couldn't, I couldn't do what they were doing years ago. You can all give it, you know, put a little thing it was true, it was due, you know, and I took it seriously. And, and, the, and, and all the people were very, very good for that, you know, sort of, um, it's, but I don't know, it, it's, people said you would get a lot of money, but you didn't get a lot of money. Because the time you go home, you had a pint of beer and something like that, and it's, it's gone. <laughs> you know, so uh, I don't know what they do now. Harry Mortimer, when I was, I was only young when he was here, Alex was brilliant. He was, he was, um, he made music all the time. And I think Alec were, were better than Harry. 
but um, I think all the professional concert conductors we've had have all got something in everything, really. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to um, say because because Jeffrey Brand came when we were at the Loeb, and he got the band very good. You know, sort of. Um, so, but but I think all the professional conductors we've had, I should I should think most people would would um, give them a high rank, you know, sort of, because it wasn't, it wasn't an easy job. You know, it's just, it's to, to put, to get, what, 28 uh, people all, you know, in seals, but, but yes, I, I wouldn't like to, to, to say anyone, really. London, 1961, Leroy Dees. And sat next to Geoffrey Whitton, and he sounded the struggle, but he wasn't. He's just you're thinking, you're absolutely brilliant. And the band would be what. I can't remember the number we drew, but it, it was absolutely, the, the, the hall just opened up when we finished. And really, really it was, was, was good. But, um, man, yeah, you can probably say that about most test pieces, you know, that, but that especially was, was the euphonium was was a, a very um how do I put it but we're with a good band and I can hear it now but I can't think much about it. It um it brought tears to our eyes. Oh, but uh, it was tremendous, really. Oh, but all the winds are tremendous, aren't they? Well, I, I think so. And I once stopped Jeff Whitten from blowing. Sat next to Jeff, and he used to take a. And he did that, and it was a bar early, and, and then you think, God, well, am I right, right or wrong? Anyway, I was right, but ooh, it, it, it it just gives you shivers. You think, well, oh, good God, if I'd have done that, and, and, and he, he'd have come in. And, <laughs> oh, but it's part of the band, isn't it? Really. But that was, that was one, I think it did happen with Cluffy as well, once. And just, oh, you know, sort of, but the, Jeff was one who used to take a breath and, and front row used to come a bit nearer, you know. <laughs> it was his type of a piece, I think. He... <clears throat> It, it had yeah. rehearsally been his house to my house for a for a dinner. <laughs> it wasn't very good that day. <laughs> oh, well, my lads were just coming, and it was very cold outside. And Jungen, who played with Diet later, he says, "Come in." He says, "I'm frozen." <laughs> Jeffrey Francis. Frozen, Ian. <laughs> so, no, I got on with, with Geoffrey, really, but uh, I got on, on, on with them all. The, 
And I, but I like Dalek. I like Dalek. Was I think it's quite important that, that um, it's something for other bands to look up to. And and other bands to hate, you know. It's, it, it's good, but I think the better bands, two or three, two or three or four, is a better thing than this one band being at the top all the time. And it's. I don't know. I don't know really what, what. But I think it it is a, th a good thing to be for for bands to be good. But other bands will try to get as better, as good as that. So that in that that respect, it's it's um, a good thing for brass bands. The only thing we used to do in the village was a concert across in the hall. Across the road when we won, and that was a free concert, and we used to play on Armistice Day, up the village and back down. So usually a Sunday morning thing like that. And then that tailed off for some reason while I was in the band. That um, I think they didn't have the the thing at the mo monument at top. They stopped it, so the band stopped coming, and that's the only thing really that I I think what they were involved in. That um, I think most of the village liked the band anyway. That um, so, but well, we hadn't done much really for the bat, for the village, only winning the contests, and then we used to play down the village when we got home. Practice. Practice. There's no easy way at all. My two lads both started playing. And one, um, the eldest lad, oh, he went in, into banking. And my youngest lad, he went into printing. So he had more, he had more time for playing than than thing. And but my eldest son, he took a trumpet. We had a trumpet with him when he went to university. He worked five years in banking, and he, he was people were still coming from university and starting above him. So he took his job off and went to university. Took his trumpet with him. And I don't think he ever got it out. He never played when they were, they were in Wales, Aberystwyth. And um, but uh, I don't know really. It, it's but my youngest lad, he's, he's won London with four or five different bands. I keep calling him mercenary. <laughs> I went down to Maurice's funeral and I was sat with the orchestra people because I, I can't remember his name now, but I knew his, I'd, I'd, I'd met him with, with Maurice. And um, it was, there was the, some band upstairs, I couldn't see them because I, I, I could. I couldn't bend my neck, and but the the orchestral people were was lovely because they knew that I played by Black Knight because I'd been down with Morris, you see, and uh, it's um, I can't remember the name of the bloke who, who I don't even know what he played, but he, he was at Morris's funeral and, and we had we had a, a chat in. It. And, but it was it was a funny funny funeral in a way because with time you come out of the church, where is he gone? Where he gone? We don't know. 
and there were there was um, a thing across the road of in invited you know sort of and I was getting back from a train I, I went down on one train and come back on another on you know the same day so when um, his, his wife asked me to go across I said no no thank you thank you very much for I said well I've, I've just an hour to get me train so it's but the, the the place was absolutely crammed with people and they weren't brass band people they were orchestral people and and a lot that his 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 reputation was absolutely superb you know but but that was him whatever he did he was just one of the lads so